And that's your forecast for now. Cool, so thank you very much. Yes. So, what have you got up at the weekend? Anything exciting? Oh, my niece's surprise birthday party. Oh, that's so, lovely. Yeah, so that'll be nice. But not a fun. surprise if she's watching oh, this. Goodness me, I've spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> have a good weekend. Bye bye. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Paul Giamatti, Jenny Slate, plus music from Lucas Nelson and POTR with Cleto and the Cleto. And now. Jimmy Kimmel! an eventful weekend for me. Did anyone else get sued by George Santos this weekend? <laughs> I am currently embroiled in what may be the most preposterous lawsuit of all time. George Santos, a man Republicans kicked out of Congress for being a fraud, <laughs> is suing me for fraud. <laughs> this is the lawsuit. James C. Kimmel, AKA Jimmy Kimmel, that's my secret pseudonym. <laughs> Why don't they list his pseudonyms, too? Why didn't it, where's Anthony DeVolder and Katara Ravash? <laughs> George uh, has rudely filed a lawsuit against me, our show, and the Walt Disney Company because we did a nice thing, because we supported him by ordering his cameo videos. <laughs> you know, after he was removed from the house, George signed on with Cameo to make some money. You know, the website where you can get a celebrity to make a video, so we wrote some absolutely ridiculous messages for him to read. <laughs> we gave them a, a credit card number, and sure enough, he recorded the messages and sent them back to us, and now he's suing. He says, we deceived him under the guise of fandom, soliciting personalized videos, <laughs> only to then broadcast these on national television. <laughs> and if there's one thing George Santos will not stand for, it's using a fake name under false pretenses. <laughs> I mean... The, and by the way, the idea that he believed these messages, which get posted on the Cameo site anyway, were from real fans. One of them was about a guy named Gary who ate six pounds of loose ground beef in under 30 minutes. <laughs> Another one was a message congratulating my mom, Brenda, on the successful cloning of her beloved Schnauzer Adolf. They were, <laughs> he says he thought these were real messages and that he was duped. He's uh, being represented by the prestigious law firm of Pot, Kettle, and Black. They are seeking $750,000 in damages, plus other damages to be determined in court. And that is why I'm setting up a GoFundMe right now, too, <laughs> with a target of $355 million so we can save this country. This is so good. I mean, this is like getting sued for paternity by Nick Cannon. It's... <laughs> Speaking of fraud, it was a very long and arduous President's Day weekend for our former commander in chief. On Friday, <laughs> Donald Trump was hit with a bigly fine by a judge in New York. He was ordered to pay $355 million, which when you work the interest in, adds up to more than $450 million. The judge has um, banned him. He's not allowed to do business in New York for three years. He put a two-year ban on Eric and Don Jr. from doing business in New York and ordered them to pay $4 million a peach, which is scary. I mean, I don't know. Eric might have to sell his Pokemon cards, so this isn't a lot of money. <laughs> the judge said the Trump family's complete lack of contrition and remorse borders on pathological, which is actually one of the nicer things a judge <laughs> has said about the Trumps in years. And after the verdict, Trump was feeling, let's just say, perturbed. It's a very sad day for, in my opinion, the country. A New York State judge just ruled that he's crooked as you could get. And a lot of people expected something like this, but not for the amount. But a crooked New York State judge just ruled that I have to pay a fine of $355 million for having built a perfect company. Perfect company. <laughs> Perfect phone call, perfect hair, perfect teeth. Why does he have to be so perfect all the time? It's a ridiculous award. This is a fine of $355 million for doing a perfect job, for having paid back a loan with no defaults, with no problems. Well, maybe one problem. 
Maybe one $400 million problem. <laughs> Basically, what he got dinged for is claiming his assets were worth a lot more than they're worth when he needed to get a loan, and claiming the same assets were worth less when it came to paying taxes. He's now claiming that those assets are worth more than the more he originally lied about them being worth. <laughs> He even wrote, I have substantially understated my assets in the financial statements, not overstated them, as the corrupt AG and judge said. Well, that's good news. Then you won't have any trouble paying that $450 million fine. That's... And of course, the sad part is his supporters believe he's being railroaded. There are a bunch of GoFundMe accounts set up to help him pay this penalty. This one's up to almost $750,000. Uh, which I could use for this George Santos thing, by the way. <laughs> but that is very good. By all means, keep giving this man your money. Give, it him, give him all your money. Cut back on those mango-flavored vape cartridges and <laughs> scratch off lotto tickets and send it all to Donald J. Trump. I'm sure he would do the same for you. I just know it <laughs> right here. Yeah, after the verdict, this is the scene outside Trump Tower. A bunch of people showed up with, I guess they had these ready, going out of business signs. <laughs> You have to love New York. Now, see, now that's a President's Day sale right there. <laughs> but this is the kind of thing that really gets him. Like the criminal charges, he doesn't even those don't comprehend. Those don't even penetrate his that hard Florida brain in his head. But when you take his money away, that's the kind of thing that gets the Trump family fired up. My father built the skyline of New York City. And this is the thanks he gets? That's right. <laughs> His father built the skyline of New York City. He, you know that big statue lady? He built that. <laughs> he invented pizza, too. He's an amazing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Daddy's working very hard to find creative new ways to squeeze cash out of his dumbs. Hair Jordan made an appearance at SneakerCon in Philadelphia on Saturday to sell high tops. Donald Trump high tops. And listen to the crowd. They're not booing him. They're saying, shoo. <laughs> This is a big crowd. Wow. A lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion in this room. Thank you. Thank you. So, so the really nice thing is we have lines, and I want to thank Chase, and I want to thank Alan, but we have lines going all around the block. They're going all around this block. They've never seen anything like this one. Yeah. No, we sure haven't. We have never seen a former president of the United States Hawking shoes. <laughs> They're calling these the Never Surrender High Top Sneaker. They go for $399 a pair. And just like everything about Donald Trump, they're both subtle and tasteful. I mean, aren't these fabulous? <laughs> this is... Looks like something you'd wear on a Flag Day mall walk with Mr. T. <laughs> According to the website, the sneakers are bold, gold, and tough, just like President Trump. And leathery. They forgot leathery. <laughs> shoes are uh, also super limited. Uh, just like our former president. And <laughs> let me tell you something. If I wanted to buy an ugly pair of shoes from a mentally unstable racist, I'd get a pair of Yeezys. At least they look kind of cool. <laughs> and by the way, he's not just selling shoes, he's also selling, he's got new cologne, Trump Victory 47 with a golden head. It's like a dildo <laughs> on top of a dildo. It's. Uh, our former president is selling gold high tops and cologne, like he owns a bodega or something. <laughs> and you know, he's been whining incessantly about how these trials are an infringement on his First Amendment rights, because if he's in court defending himself, he can't be out campaigning, and yet somehow he was able to work a footwear convention into his busy schedule. This country's not doing so well. We're gonna turn this country around fast. We're gonna turn it around fast. And we're gonna remember the young people and we're going to remember Sneaker Con, you know that. We're going to remember the young people, the young people especially that wear sneakers, right? That's right. Under Donald Trump, the young sneaker wearers shall be forgotten no more. You're all sneakerheads. You're sneakerheads, right? Does everybody in the room consider themselves a sneakerhead? I think so. Huh? This is a joke, right? He's screwing with us now, right? I mean, this has to be a joke. People like this cannot possibly exist. Yes, we need him. He's a Christian. He's a good, honest man. They're after him for no reason. Go out and vote for Trump. Vote Trump. No paper. Go out and vote for Trump. He's a good man. Look at his family. They're all good kids. All good kids. 
Is she done? <laughs> okay, thank you, sweetheart. Security will escort you away from me. I want to know where these sneakers of his are made. You know, there's no mention of it on the website. Usually it says made in the USA or made. He just gave a speech in Michigan saying we need to bring manufacturing back to the United States. What do you want to bet those sneakers are from China or some other country? <laughs> and by the way, in the interest of equal time, I should mention that President Biden also just released his own line of sneakers. And uh, they're pretty, <laughs> they're pretty darn sweet. Trump had a rally in a suburb of Detroit over the weekend, and you know, there's been a lot of talk about whether our top two candidates are sharp enough to be president, which is why this was such an exciting opportunity to watch the inside of our stable genius's mind at work. Joe Biden allowed this to happen. We will call it from now on Biden migrant crime, okay? It's migrant crime. This is, we'll call it, I got it, migrant. Let's call it migrant. <laughs> Biden crime. Bi oh, that's good. That's <laughs> smart. Very smart. Brilliant, actually. What's the opposite of a brainstorm? It's called the Magarina. It's like, <laughs> you know, they did, um, they did a survey of political science experts and presidential historians. They asked them to rank all the American presidents. Joe Biden was ranked the 14th greatest president of all time. Trump was ranked last, which had to be especially hurtful because the survey was shared on Fox News and foxnews.com. Abe Lincoln was number one, FDR was number two, Obama was seventh, and out of all the presidents we've had, Trump was ranked the worst. Worse than Nixon, worse than Hoover, Worse than Dyson, worse than Kenmore, which I know they're vacuum cleaners, but you know what I mean. He sucks. And it's a shame because no one has been more generous when it comes to sharing praise for former presidents than Donald J. Trump. This is Donald Trump, hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington. He actually once said, I'm the greatest president in the history of our country. And I said, does that include Lincoln and Washington? He said, yes. And now he's got me down as the greatest president in the history of our country, including George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. I think I've done more for the black community than any other president. And let's take a pass on Abraham Lincoln, because he did good, although it's always questionable. You know, Abraham Lincoln, of course, if you negotiated it, you probably wouldn't even know who Abraham Lincoln was. I've always said I could be more presidential than any president in history, except for Honest Abe Lincoln when he's wearing the hat. Honest Abe Lincoln. They say he got the worst press of anybody. I say, I dispute it. They always said, Lincoln, nobody got treated worse than Lincoln. I believe I am treated worse. Happy President's Day. Losers. Happy President's Day, Mr. Former President. Put on back, put on back.